of sexual immor immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have their own husband. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own, her own body, but the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. But I say this as a concession, not as a commandment. For I wish that all men were even as myself, but each one has his own gift from God, one in this manner and another in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they cannot exercise self-control, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Now to the married I command, yet not but the Lord. A wife is not to depart from her husband. But even if she does depart, let her, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. But to the rest, to the rest I, not the Lord, say, if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she's willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. Yes, Thank Lord. you. Thank you. So we established already in, uh, from previous teachings that in Genesis 2.24 that it is the desire of God for us to, to be married. And here, 1 Corinthians 7.11 says, once you are married, you cannot divorce. God eats divorce. Like I, the way I, I look at it is I know people say, like I said, I've, I've, I've said previously you know, here, some pastors know how to counsel you know, people about divorce and all that. They know how to say it, but I think it is plain enough. Once you are married, got a divorce, you cannot divorce. I know there are reasons that people will say, okay, uh, maybe domestic violence and other issues, you know. Yeah, but God, is, God just does not like divorce. So it requires work for your, for, for your marriage, for our marriages to survive. You know, so we have two outlines here, outline A and outline B. So and like the topic suggests, bridging uh, marital gaps. So there are, there are gaps sometimes, there are reasons Leading causes. Marriage does just, marriage, people just don't drift apart. There are always reasons. Sometimes genuine reasons too. Genuine reasons too. But um, according to God, not genuine enough in his sight for you to, to divorce. You know, so I want us to, uh, before we look at the manual, what, what are the leading causes or what are the causes? Why do people divorce? You know, I love you. I can't sleep without you. How does he now all of a sudden turn I will kill you? you no, know, we can't be under the same roof. This whole city cannot contain both of us. You know, how do people get there? What are the reasons? And I'm asking the, you know, I'm asking us. <laughs> what are the reasons? Ma? Infidelity. 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 Yeah, that's that's true. But I was just thinking about it that um, even at that, as a Christian, you what can you really do about it? Is that a good ground to divorce? <laughs> you changed your mind so fast. <laughs> you didn't even try to. So infidelity. Pastor, is that that's right, sir? Is that a good ground to go your separate ways? Really, it's, it's personal, but for me, I don't think it's a good. I don't think it's a good enough ground. It's a good ground, but then it's, I don't think it's a good enough ground to do what God hates. Thank you, sir. And um, please, I'm saying, as a Christian, you know, because I really cannot speak for the rest of the world, yeah. but I, by the grace of God, I, I, I see what the Bible says. It's it's okay to be bitter, but I, you know, it. How do I say this now? It's hard on the person, you know, whoever is going to bear the, the consequences. But sometimes we look at infidelity as just maybe infidelity, but there are other things that will follow sometimes. You know, God forbid a child from that. Now you have, you have a step all of a sudden that you did not bargain for. A lot, a lot. But as a Christian, 
maybe what you do in that case is to go for um, counseling. You know, go for counseling. Yes, ma'am. Situations like that, what are you supposed to do? So, like you just um, rightly said as an example, like, okay, this person did not just go out of the house, but this person now now has a child out of wedlock, and now there's a step somewhere, or sometimes what about um, diseases? What do you do? God hates divorce, so what should that person do? Yes, sir. Pastor. Don't stay in the marriage. The reason why people talk about um, 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 infidelity yes, sir. is is when it comes to the to the woman. When it is the man that is um, playing around, it's not a big deal. Nobody sees it as any reason why people should divorce. Nobody. I mean, it's not a big deal. But when it's a woman, a woman is caught and say, Ah, how can you do that? So. Really, if it has happened, it has happened. It's not a life and death thing. For me, it's like, well, why not? God hates divorce. For you to do what God hates, you must really, really have something. It must be life-threatening for you to really go out of your way to begin to do divorce. Praise the Lord. Sorry. <laughs> I, have a, I have another question. So, um, so what if... Um, what if it's not um, infidelity? Because there are many reasons why people get divorced. What if it's something like, um, um, you just mentioned it, um, domestic violence. That Life-threatening. Life-threatening, exactly. So what if it's life-threatening? What do you do? I mean, from, oh, yes, sir. I think like Pastor said, um, the, 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 the threat to life should never be trivialized. I mean, there was this sensational case that happened a year or two ago of that very anointed singer who until she was killed, nobody knew anything was happening. Even her pastor, everybody was like, the pastor... They never knew. So I think in such cases, those are not the kind of things that uh, people should be quiet about. I think in such cases, true God hates divorce, there can be separation for a while until both parties have been counseled and deliverance has happened and then they can come back together. I, I think that would be my approach, but absolutely nobody should uh, tolerate physical abuse, especially when it gets to the point that people are having repeated bruises, scars, and I, 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 I lived in a military environment, and you see some of these people, they get drunk, they'll beat their white, blue, black, the next morning, they are lovey-dovey, begging again, and it's always the devil. So it was the devil, it was the devil. So I think sometimes there should be a separation so that they can cast out the devil before people come back together and... Uh, by God's grace. I believe not, I mean, I've seen 180 transformations where people who were, and everybody's, what happened? It was God that happened. Amen. Uh, but um, yes, sir, I think um, that would be a wise counsel for them to go there, sep uh, to, to separate. But while they're on it, let it be known that they cannot um, have anything on the side, nothing, you, you're you going to be on your own, you stay in. It doesn't matter five years, ten years, fifteen years, you cannot remarry because you did not divorce, so you're staying on your own. You, I mean, I kind of get it that, you know, he abused you and all that, but you cannot um, have extramarital, because that, that's what he's going to say. And I'm saying this because this is church. You know, I'm not talking, um, I don't, I don't, I really don't know how the word would do it. But um, like I was telling my wife the other day, I said, people do counsel, you know. It's just that um, in the world, the way they do it is the, there's, there's a problem that they go for counsel. But in the church, you are supposed to go through counseling before marriage. Not that, so you not that are you, in, not, you don't intervene at the point of issues now. So in the church, you go for counseling. The pastors, they have experience, you know, uh, they will be able to take you through 
through stuff. But like, like, um, but like I said earlier, let it be known that you cannot, re you cannot remarry. You can't be with somebody else while you are separated from your, from your um, husband or wife. But that's not just the only reason. What are other reasons apart from infidelity? You know, what are other reasons why people? Because that's basically what we're doing for part A and before we go to B. B on this right here is your solution. Pastor Barisa. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, sir. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh, sir. I was also going to say, like, financial irresponsibility. That's like, a big one, yeah. Just not managing your family's finances very well, and maybe husband stealing from wife, wife stealing from husband, and just money becomes. <laughs> Uh, or like, const like not being constantly honest, your I guess. <laughs> <laughs> like, like taking not money and hiding honest. it, like offshore accounts, like just being very dubious with their finances, basically. <laughs> that is why you must marry. That's why it's also important. Let's uh, let's say that again. It is ma important to marry in Christ. Marry a Christian brother. Marry a Christian sister. Hopefully, that will take care of it. Hopefully. Pastor Bali? It's not life threatening. It's not life threatening. About the financial one. No, what is that? What I, okay, ma. Mine is yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, sir. I don't know. I'm just sometimes I'm very confused. So when you say marry a Christian, right? Now, this 2023, right? In many people are Christians. Yes. There are many Christians, but they are wicked. But you will not know until you have entered the marriage, right? Pastor Bumi now. Okay, so Pastor Bumi is going to answer the question. Wait, then let me answer the question. <laughs> and you will not know until you enter the marriage. Like, you see people that are paired up, really. Like, a pastor will come and tell you, I have this brother, he's such a good brother. And then in that marriage, two years, three years, things are being revealed. That even the pastor is like, hey? So, how do you... How do you not fall into that trap? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think I've said it in one of our um, things before. It is not all Christian that you can marry. It is not all Christian that I can marry. It is not all Christian that Israel can marry. The thing is, though you are tongue-speaking, filled with the Holy Spirit and all of these things, and I'm not saying a person that is deceiving you as a Christian. I'm talking about a Christian. It is not everybody that I can marry. It's not everybody that can tolerate me, though. You might look at me from outside and I'm the best person ever. But in the house, it's not everybody. Everybody cannot get married to me. And I cannot get married to everybody. Being a Christian and also a child of God. I'm not talking about a church goer now. And I'm not talking about somebody that is faking it. I'm talking about a real, real Christian. Because there are some things that you will see. In this person that will make you know that this person is not a fit for me, though you are a born again Christian. There are some things that I will never take. I will not take it when we are dating. So there's no need for me to be married to you. There are some things that we want God to. This is the best thing because it looks like my spec. This is my spec. So God must make this person. So when you begin to see some things, you will still go ahead with it because you think this is the spec for you. That is why you will see a Christian when they are not married, things begin to go left. Because it is not every born again Christian that another born again Christian can marry. You have yours, but it's not everybody. And I'm not, like I keep saying this, I'm not talking about somebody that is even faking it now. I'm talking about real born again Christian. Many a times we go into it knowing fully well that there are some things in, that's why we caught. There are some things in this person that probably will not go well with me. There's some things, some people might have it as a major, some people might have it as a minor, some people will say this is what God says about this person. Some of us, late, lately, like you're saying, many people go into marriage without even consulting God. They just say this person is my spec, they love me, I love them. And sometimes this love of a thing begins to fade away because there's no basis for it. And the thing is, if you go into a marriage and you're looking at this person and you're courting this person and you see things that is not going to... Number one, if you go to this person, what, what about your family? You begin to see some things in this person's family. They are baggage that you would have to carry. Can you carry that baggage? If you cannot carry it, God will give you your husband. Don't go to something and then regret it later. Because when you're getting married to somebody, you're not getting married to a person. Somebody say in their family when we get married, they must do a season for your children. Is that a, and that person is born again. But this person, 
is you see how they relate with their parents and you know that this person will most likely follow their father's advice and now they're telling you that when we do in our marriage in our home or they have to do incision is that the person i want to marry no i already know that yes this person is a good um match for me but we cannot do it because there's so many other things that are not right some things we'll see if somebody is not pretending that's a different matter but when you're not pretending there are some things that you see in a person that you know for a fact that many people that i see and i'm like i can never be married to this person though they are christians but i can never be married to them praise the lord hallelujah um i also believe that as many as pastor, pastor first said that some pastor will introduce you yes they introduce you but they it's up to you now to marry the person as many that are led by the spirit of god they are the children of god marriage is a lifetime contract you must you must not be uh, coerced you must not be you must they mustn't push you to it you must open your eyes and pray and prayerfully but by the way the fact that someone somebody after two years they not um that person doesn't mean that they are not going to be the person eventually i wasn't like this when my wife married me so maybe we it just depends on your um, your level of tolerance because once you are joined together you cannot divorce you take that to god and you keep praying i, I um somebody was um i knew someone that married um another a, a dickness married they were I mean, they were just church goers, but eventually she became a dickness, but the man was still doing his work. And um, a time came, and the man said, you know, he went through all this fetish stuff and everything, and uh, the, they told the wife that, okay, for, this, for your husband to, I don't know if it was his work or something else, you have to carry the sacrifice, and you put at this T-junction a dickness now. They've been married together, so the woman went to the pastor. The pastor said, yeah, that's your husband. You have to do whatever he asks you to do. So, and at, in the middle of the night, at 12 a.m., 1 a.m., she was crying. She was doing everything. She couldn't take it. You, you, you want to divorce her. You want to stay by your own. You cannot, you know. Eventually, she did. As a, and a dickness. You know, when they put the, whatever they're going to put in the concussion, and you, you now go in the middle. And those people, they come in, they were behind her, doing incantation and everything. A dickness. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. She didn't want to. It was a pastor that said, you, "Whatever your husband, I, I don't. Know, whatever your husband asks you to do." That's why I said sometimes you need counsel. Now, it was a pastor that said, "You have to. You, you have. You have to do it." Whether right or wrong, I don't know. But the man later became a Christian. He later became a Christian. So, like I said, the fact that you are going through whatever after being married doesn't mean that that's not. I don't, it just depends. You have to hear God. Marriage is a, is, is, a, is, a, is a serious matter. I don't know how people... In fact, I don't want to cancel people when it comes to marriage because whatever we teach right here, they are just principles. There are things that you are going to... My, I'm, not your, I'm, not, I'm not going to be your husband. You are, I'm not going to, you are, my wife is not your wife. My, so I, I, I really do not like it. But because um, um, Abigail had married Nabal a fool. And until Nabal died, Abigail was there. So, uh, for if you are, because what people want to hear is, oh, leave your husband, go. That won't come out from my own mouth. You know what I'm saying? Because I, this is what the God of what the Word of God says, and God, He knows the end of a thing from the beginning. He said, live in peace with all men. I want to believe you have put all those considerations. By the way, because of lack of time, I want to go. I was looking now. What are the causes of causes of um, divorce? Lot of in America right here, for example, domestic problems, financial, marrying too young, infidelity. Then I came, I, I came, I found this. It kind of doesn't make too much sense, but it says uh, weight gain, <laughs> weight gain, <laughs> commitment. What weight loss? Uh, I, 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 I didn't see that there, but it said weight gain, <laughs> weight gain. So you know, <laughs> lack of family support. Then uh, maybe eight or nine religious uh, difference. Which kind of makes sense because now you are mar you marrying this person that is not uh, you used to go to club party together and now all of a sudden he's not a pastor. What you did not bargain for. Now he wants to sleep at church and you are not looking at it. But we didn't start this way, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so I found that. And uh, by the way, I found some. They said um, forty to fifty percent of divorce will happen in the first eight years. Forty to fifty. 40 to 50 percent, right here in, um, in this part of the world. After eight years, 40 to 50. By, by the 15th year, they are, I think it went about maybe 70-something. 
Yeah. And you have to put, it, I believe it's more, and I'll tell you why. Because some people are not even, they, you see, this, 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 this is when people are married. Some people are just cohabiting anyway. So you don't have them here. They're not on this data. They're just there for 15 years and whatever. So they just go quietly. So maybe it will be more, you know. So I went to Nigeria now. I went to Nigeria. Courses, you know, leading courses. Then I found a um, lack of trust. I think um, maybe to Sister Ife and by Yolajide. Lack of trust. Then cheating. Then I found something interesting here too. Barrenness. Number three, barrenness. I was going to contest that and argue, but then I remember the story of a pastor and pastor missus very close to us. They were married for a long, long, long time. After a while, the man couldn't take it or the woman, I don't know. In fact, I was shocked when the, my mother told me the man was drinking. I was already drinking and the woman, they just went because they couldn't take it anymore after 15 years. When, you know, sometimes it's hard. That's why you must get it right. You know, I, I'm not saying they didn't get it right, but when the foundation is corrupt sometimes, it's hard to build on that, you know. There are things that you can't overlook. I was telling somebody, this person was slapping you when you were at college, and in your mind, you're still going to marry this person. Why? Why? It won't stop. This person was, was using belt on you when you were cutting, and you still want to marry. For what reason? You don't like yourself? Somebody is not taking care of his parents and his mother is saying that they are, and you think that person will take care of you like that? <laughs> are you serious? Eh? There are some people that they don't, they don't have the fear of God in their mind. They don't even have any regard for man. Tell your pastor, they'll tell you, and so what? Is he feeding me? You know what I'm saying? So you have to be, you have to prayerfully go into these things. I want us to go into the, the um, outline, hey, what they have right here. Locational gaps. Long period of absence whether traveling for work or serving in the military, greatly reduces <laughs> the opportunities for couples to properly bond. Examples are, now they gave the example of Potiphar, Potiphar's wife. Please, for people that, it was hard for my, I, my relationship was like that with my wife, it was kind of tough, but we were not married. So there were, I believe, in my own mind, I thought uh, we had some kind of liberty. But for people that are married now, how do you cope? Lo uh, locational gap. Because don't forget that this person is not playing. They are on the field. Like they gave the story of, uh, I think, the second Samuel passed, second Samuel 11. I, I, in fact, when I saw that, I was, I, I, they were almost as if they were trying to blame Uriah, Uriah for going to war. <laughs> eh? Almost as if they were trying, because we have second Samuel 11. That's, uh, um, David took Uriah's wife. I'm not defending anybody, but I'm just saying. <laughs> But because Uriah went to war to defend the, his country. And David took Uriah's wife. And now they're giving the locational guards. That's what we have here. Locational guards. Uriah was on the war. And the other one was uh, Potiphar. But Joseph David and Potiphar. Uriah to his wife. Uriah did not answer. Yeah, because of his loyalty to his uh, this thing. But before we get there, how do we manage that locational guards, man? Let us... Uh, let the <laughs> Yes, sir. Maybe we'll come. Yes, ma. Yes, sir. Maybe we'll come to. Maybe we'll, we're going to come to that. But we'll come to that when we are on outline B on mitigation. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, when we get to that mitigation, so maybe we'll deal with that. So let let me just let me let's deal with this then. Yeah. No, no, ma. Yes, sir. Then we have emotional gaps. I have I have about a lot of them, but we we'll, then there we have um boundary uh, poor boundaries, revenge, sexual gaps. Financial gaps, like um, the, uh, yes, the mentioned. When the financial orientation of the couple differs, and both parties. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, yes, yeah, so, yes, yeah, sexual gaps, so, uh, financial gaps. So let's do, let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. <laughs> let's okay. So let's let's so let's do it this way. Let's go to emotional gaps. B, do we have that, Amanda? Let's go to the emotional gaps. The feeling of uh, insecurity and loneliness, whether emotional, physical, 
or sexual can create a gap between couples. The search for excitement to escape boredom. An experiment with new things like adopting new hobbies or hanging out with new friends can affect relationship between spouses. Also, Yes, I'm here. Emotional gap, I think, is like when someone does not fulfill your emotional needs. Like, like if you're someone that your love language is words of affirmation and your partner is just someone that does not even say, I appreciate you for just doing this or I appreciate you for always being on top of things. And then one of your coworkers now starts saying, you're so great. If I know you're getting your emotional needs from somebody else, right? And then even without any form of infidelity, like physical infidelity, you've already committed like emotional infidelity because that's what you now go to for that emotional validation. I don't know if it makes sense, but I don't know. Uh, but um, yeah, it makes sense. But I was just thinking that those things were there when you were cutting and um, if you wasn't doing it then, why do you think you would do it now? Yes, ma. Huh? Uh, yes, oh, yeah. I, I think, sir, I think she's hitting a very valid point. I agree. I think sometimes, um, I mean, everybody's guilty. I'm guilty of this too. We love our partner sometimes the way uh, we feel we should love them, but not necessarily the way they want to be loved. So just paying attention to that. So sometimes during courtship, we do these things. And then once the marriage phase comes in, we tend to kind of relax and take a back seat. And I think that's what was she's highlighted. Uh, before I come to that, I just, uh, you see, I will ask the reason why I'm saying this is because I hope you are not coping, adapting to situations, only for you now to get into marriage, thinking I'll just bear this. And when I get into then, I will do, uh, you know, we will change, we'll time down, whatever. It doesn't work that way. I just hope you are, you, I'm just saying this so that we have that because. I remember my wife was used to tell me that ah, ah, we've been working, you are not even holding my hands. You are not, ah, ah. But you are not, I said, but I've never done that. At no point did I do that. So now, you saying this to me is almost as if you're making me feel guilty. But I never did. I never, I'm not, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's because, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, no, I'm not doing, I'm seeing it's, it's, it's not possible to change, but you have to you can't force the person to change in one month in two months. You have to wait till when they change. Not that, okay, one month, two months. Because I never did. If it was something I was doing before, then maybe you have a good ground to accuse me of not doing this. And I, that was, was way when we were cutting. Way, way, way. I said, but. So it don't, it's not as if you are hiding anything. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, sir. Hey, that's what I'm saying. That I'm still working on it. Yeah. And that's the problem. You don't, you never know. You know what I'm saying? Because if the person wasn't doing it when they were cutting, now in marriage, you are because you are now married now, you are. Uh, how, do you know how many issues that we have met already? Yes, yes. Praise God. Number, yes. I feel like this conversation we're having is not balanced, and I'll say why. Yes, sir. I think women in general, there are so many emotional needs that we have that you know in your heart that you need to resolve those things. It doesn't matter who it is. Your emotional needs will never be 100% met by somebody else. But because we have high expectations, our expectations are always downed. Another one is this thing that Staldun just said. So when you guys were courting, the guy wasn't, or the woman wasn't doing those things. But after marriage, maybe you see another person's husband or wife doing those things for them. You then put that responsibility on your spouse to become a new person, date night. date night, and then you have calendars that are not realistic, you know, things like that. But I'm just sorry, I'm just saying. No, you are, you, are, you are saying the truth. Yeah, <laughs> 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 Pastor Brian, yes, sir. Brian, no, but I think Ariana, sorry, Brian, before you come to uh, 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 please wait, Ariana, please go. Uh, I don't want to change the topic too yeah. much, but the book in Emotional Gap says. The search for excitement to escape boredom and experiment with new things. So sometimes married couples can maybe get stuck in a routine. I don't think that's enough to cause divorce, but it can cause emotional gaps. So it's, I think it's important to try new things with your partner and not get stuck in routine. 
That's true. So you have to work on it. You have to work on it. You have to work on it together. Right? Yes. Um, so I will just echo what Barabadi said. Reading too much of Mills and Booms and watching a lot of um, Hollywood. I think for me, um, like you said, if things, if your partner wasn't doing certain things during when you guys were courting, and you have the belief that when we get married, I will change that person, I think is the wrongest mistake to have going into marriage. I think there are um, nicer ways of making your partner see that, you know what, I love this, and I would like you to do this. Um, for example, you know, my wife would tell me, Nika, I want you to tell me, you know, I'm like, if this looks good on me, if I've done this right, say it. Do I say it every time? No. But she will always remind me. Sometimes it may come to me like very like harsh. I'll be like, oh my God, can you just say it nicely? But I know that it's what she like does that she wants. Do I do other things that she loves? Yes. Like on Thursday when we are coming, she was just talking about how wonderful my jello fry is, even better than I was like, oh my God. Yeah, so that's good. Like, that makes me feel so good, and I love that, you understand. But now projecting other things that I've not done well, you know, it would be very wrong for her to do, right? But she would always encourage me to, like, do other things, like um, dates, nights on Fridays. Do we do that every time? No. But how do we make up? You know what, let's, let's just, can we take a walk? Like, she will come up with things. Well, let's go to this place. Let's do that. Like, just make things realistic. Not be like, oh, it has to be... Um, can do night, tells to be this and that. You know, you have to be realistic. A lot of times, like Sister Okwe said, when you see your neighbor holding or hugging their partner, you now feel like your husband should be doing that as well. You don't know if that person was actually apologizing or acting. We see a lot of Instagram show off on the streets, and when they get into their clothes, though, yes. they are beating themselves. So I think a lot of times we should not look at other people's relationship and try to make your partner to be like that. Praise God. I think just to add, just to, add to yes, what uh, Dr. Yinka said, I mean, the truth of the matter is uh, I'm not apologizing on behalf of men. But the point is that maybe we need to put in some more efforts. I agree. But the point I want to come back to is this. Whether we like it or not, Culture plays a lot of influence on how we behave. Uh, let me learn this, Pastor Bomi. You recall, at least those of us who grew up in Africa, did you ever see your parents kiss or hug? Meanwhile, every year you are having a new sibling. So, so, so the, way, the way we've been socialized, the way we have been socialized is that these are matters for the inner room. And so even... Some of us, when we come to this place now, we see people who are able to uh, openly express affection in public. And then you suddenly want to bring people into that mold. I, honestly, can I count the number of times my mother or my father ever hugged me as a child? Then suddenly, you are learning how to hug. It's awkward for some people. Right? But the point is this. We're not making excuses. Communicate your needs not in, a, in an adversarial way, not in a comparative analysis way, not in a derogatory way. And finally, what your husband is not doing, initiate the action. Initiate it. It's in your court. Why must it be the man that must initiate date night always? Why can the wife not say, why can the wife not say, what are you doing on Friday? Yes, no, 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 no. Let me, let me land. Please, let me have, land. We have about five minutes for, so, for, sir, for this So, sir, the point I'm making is, what you expect from us and we're not doing, you initiate the action and see if we won't respond. So, we're taking back the time. So, five minutes. Yes, sir, Pastor, sir. Okay, praise the Lord. Um, that culture issue is very important. Let's not forget that. It's very, very important, especially for those of our... Um, generation. For example, in Somalia, let me just let me just talk about the, the influence of culture. Female genital mutilation is at ninety eight percent. Ninety eight out of a hundred girls will be caught. Up till now, even those who are even in America here, and it is a Somali cultural issue. 
So even in their communities here in America, they do it. Then even in, um, you, we have some Somalis in Kenya. In the Somali community in Kenya, it is there because it is culture. So my staff, that I asked them that, how do you people still do? Do you are here? We are talking. They will be lying. But when they get home, that is what they will do. So it's culture. Culture is very, very, very strong and plays a role. So most of these things that we are talking about is cultural. And many of our young people are confused between the culture, between Western culture and the new culture that they are, I mean, the old culture where they are coming from. And so the need for balance is there. So let's put that one at the side. The second issue, one well, some of the issues that have been raised is that um, what you were not doing before when you were caught in that, you should have seen it that the guy, this person is not like that. That is even if uh, he was not doing that, even if he was, that he's trying to bring this word of affirmation. And that. That's not how he is. That's why it is not manifesting now. He was trying to do it just to not pretending. But this is what you want. I like you. I'm, so he was trying his best. But after that, I don't get you. <laughs> 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 hey, don't die. So, that, so he, might be, he might have been trying, but that's not who he is. And so let me end what my contribution by saying this. And this is very, very important. There are fundamentals which has to be in place for you to take the decision of marriage. The Bible says that if the foundation be destroyed, what can even the righteous, what can they do? No matter how righteous you are, building on a faulty foundation is going to be a problematic thing. And that is why you can never get it wrong if you do it the church way. Somebody is going to say I'm being spiritual now. But honestly, I mean, you are not likely to get it wrong if you do it the church because there are institutional safeguards. There are systemic safeguards that are there within the church setting that will most likely bring things about such that, ah, you know, Brian Carl was like, ah, I don't want pastor to hear about my affair, my matter inside my house. So he will comfort himself. That, it's a, it's a, church, it's a, it's a church safeguard. Also, so, okay, when you people are caught in, they say, bring the person to church. When you bring me somebody that is not born again, I know. <laughs> me, like this, when the person comes, say, are you a Christian? Say, I'm a Christian. Eh? Praise the, pray for us. Then the guy comes, say, praise Lord. Ah, I already know that the person is not born again. So, and, and I have my leading questions, basic questions. Oh, so what do you do in church? What's the name of your pastor? <laughs> this person does not know. You know the person is not in church. So watch. So, when the guy, when the guy brings the lady and you are asking this, and let me flip it now, and we're asking these questions, and you know that this person is not a child of God in the real sense of it. This person is not born again. The premise based on which you want to marry the person is some other extraneous reasons. Either the guy is nice, or he's rich, or he treats, he gives me a word of affirmation. He do, those are the things that is making you do so. He's holding my hand and all of this. And that. Yeah. Those are the issues. That will not work. First things first, let the person be a child of God. You have accountability. There is, uh, there is, a, there is a cousin of mine that is having problems with a wife now. When he was going to get married, he said he doesn't want, any, he doesn't want noise. He doesn't want, uh, he just, they told him that he should just do uh, marriage and not notice. So when he was going to get the wife, they did not invite family. Meanwhile, within the church setting, parental consent is very, very important. So that's what I'm talking about, institutional safeguards in the church. That When you are going, if you, there are people, I've seen there are people, that are, their parents are Muslims. And they say they want to go, and the parents insist that what they must do is Muslim wedding. Pastor said, yes, go and do the Muslim wedding. Let the, let the parents bless you. Then thereafter, we'll bless you in church. Now they are having problems. The wife does not know who to go to because there was no parent, there was no family that was there. So those are some. There are institutional safeguards that are in the church. You do counseling. You do. If you go through the process, you are most likely not to get it wrong. It is when people don't go through the process when you 
short circle things when you just find the way, eh, we say you should take time to say, eh, well, we have just done it. Eh, Pastor, just please bless God. You are coming to me to bless. I will bless whatever you bring. But if you do it the way we are telling you to do it, you will not get it wrong. And finally, let me make this point. I've seen people, it is because they want to marry that they are coming to church now. You will see them coming to church. May I see them? You, you think you are wiser than me? I, I know. Now that's the reason why you are coming. You come, I will bless you. Because that's my job. So that's my job to do. But when we ask that you should come to church and you should be a planting of the Lord, you should be in church. All of these things will seep into you. All of these words that we are saying now, it will be in you. You know it. And so you will work. We are talking about the fruits of the Spirit. You have the Spirit of God in you. It will begin to germinate. You have that, that fruit of the Spirit will help you. But when you come today, then you say, oh, there is rain. I can't come on Sunday. You are not doing this. Those things will, you to bottom out at the end of the day. Bottom line, you want to get your marriage right? Go to church. Thank you. We'll continue next week by the grace. Huh? Comment. Comment. Praise God. So we have Olad Nike Adediji. He's saying that pride is also a cause, and that what the world calls incon irreconcilable differences, it is caused not by paying attention to each other and finding the flame. He also says that each marriage is different, but we need to look for solutions that preserve life and relationships. Counseling when there is a problem in marriage is important. Long distance relationships take time to plan, to see each other regularly, and to talk frequently on the phone, sharing each other's day. Lastly, he says, temptation is real. Amen. Praise we're gonna, God. Yeah, we're going to continue this week by the grace of God. Like I said, we these are just ways, you know. These are just ways. Next week we we'll talk on um, how to mitigate some of these ways. May God help us in Jesus' name.